So Jasmine, I, I'm feeling so great to be here with you today. I've heard like lots of things about your mission, <laughs> about your upcoming book, which I'm eager to see uh, what all you have put into it. And now that I'm being here today, I'm just burning out with few questions on my own. And uh, where should I start? I would like to ask you something about the whole this phenomenon of productivity, which people seem to be so much obsessed with nowadays. How to be more productive, what to do to do more in life, or in, to do more today, or to do more this month. So, the, the, does this all obsession with doing more is really required? I mean, uh, what does it do to us in fact? Does it have some hidden consequences, the fact that we want to do so much in life, which we sort of fail to, uh, fail to consider until perhaps it's too late? Mm -hmm. What's the whole deal of productivity? Is it really necessary that much? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we are ending up uh, like a little robot, so we try to accomplish more and more and more things. So mm -hmm. because it's compelling, right, we have all possibilities nowadays. So we can fly everywhere at any time, we can eat, we can, we can do everything, right? Mm -hmm. we, we think like at mm -hmm. first, at least. So the productivity, I think, is actually the question, what do you really want to accomplish? Not what can you or, you know, in theory, what would be possible, but what is actually the very much, you know, the, the most important, let's put really the most important thing to you. Mm -hmm. And I think the most productive people to me are the people who are completely focused and they don't touch anything else, which other can do, they're not touching that stuff. They're not working on that. Okay. Even when they sit there and it looks very, you know, so, hey, easy going life, yeah. how productive. So they are actually the ones who are super concentrated and they are super productive. And usually when we talk about this, this has something to do with leadership mm -hmm. to others, but of course, leadership with themselves. Mm -hmm. So with her or himself, first of all, because I think highly productive means you will be very highly uh, selective, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. Because we, we can't deny the fact we are human beings, we are not mm -hmm. robots, even when our brain function almost like a like a computer in an amazing computer but it needs rest and it needs a focus so you know keyword is multitasking it's just not working multitasking is actually doing a lot of things back to back you can't do things simultaneously right so either either you uh, think about one article or you think about one conversation mm -hmm. or something like this mm -hmm. right or you think about what what next can be done mm -hmm. So it's, it looks like it's simultaneously, but it's not. So okay, so that's, not that's like an interesting point you just made. Do you mean to say that productivity is okay when there is a clear laser sharp focus towards something? Is that when productivity is okay to be more productive? It's towards to productivity, yes. I mean, you have to do your homework mm -hmm. to become really productive. Mm -hmm. And doing a lot of things and uh, you know, in a very short time is definitely not productive. As you, I don't know, maybe you heard about all this burnout syndromes. This yep. comes usually from this multitasking. We try to accomplish all. Mm -hmm. We have so many great ideas. And I also fell into this trap many, many years ago. I thought, so instead of one company, why not running three companies? Because one company takes some time. So I push here and then yeah, meet right. while, while I'm waiting until this, you know, stone gets, gets rolling and keep moving and, you know, or get moving first of all. I can do this. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, and then I push here and then maybe on the third one. Mm -hmm. And it's just not working like this because mm -hmm. what happens is you get creativity, you get inspiration and a couple of things. So like you and your work, you're thinking of one thing, so maybe to, to find out more uh, facilities which you can put under your under your umbrella what you offer. So to people to find out, okay, which hotels are actually the one which I'm looking for, for example. And um, this is what, what keeps your mind occupied. So wherever you are, whatever you read, you still have this focus, you have this interest. Right. So just imagine you have two different things. So maybe bathtubs or something, I mean completely different or mm -hmm. maybe even maybe similar to that, but it doesn't matter. So your, your mind is already then diversified for mm -hmm. two things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this, this is really exhausting for the brain. So coming back to the question of productivity, I think highly productive means you are concentrated and that requires that you choose 
You make a clear oh, that's decision. That's a key ingredient. Be productive, but not before you make a choice in regards to what are you going to be productive at. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So the letter to success uh, is, is an important thing, but you have to be sure where is the letter leaned on. Mm -hmm. Is this actually the right target? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. This prompts me to another question which just popped up right now. As you said, like almost each and every one of us has at least two, three things to do in his mind and he would like to achieve all the three of them. <laughs> but yeah, a choice has to be made eventually. So any advice on how to pick up one of these three which is more important for us than others? Yes, I tell you, we have a very nice uh, technique. Let's consider, you give, give me two examples please, what you would like to do, two different things. Okay. Pretty easy in my case. One in one uh, aspect, I want to a uh, gross talent to be a multi-million dollar company. Mm -hmm. So far, it's doing great in that direction. But on the other part, I want to further uh, in-depth my yoga practice. I am a practitioner not just by hobby but by also by profession nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I want to go truly to the depth of, of, of this of this science. I have to uh, neglect everything else and just focus for this. Like in other words, just disappear from everything else just to put up this practice in a proper manner. So I'm finding myself split sometimes between mm. which one of these two to pursue. At, at, at you have a dilemma. Yeah, yeah. The dilemma is often there. So that means you are thinking about like a yoga guru or just diving completely into this. That's right. Yeah, maybe yoga okay. guru sounds a bit too exotic, exotic but. Yeah, that's no, it doesn't matter, just from my understanding. <laughs> so just imagine there's one world and you are super successful running a multi-million or billion dollar company. Hmm. So whatever is required there, you just succeeded, you did it. Right. So it's just great, but it's just this. So you concentrate completely on that. Just imagine how our life and this world would look like and feel like and taste like. So this is the world, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So now there's another world and this is about you are indulging completely into yoga. Mm -hmm. So this is, you don't do anything else. You are, oh, with this meditation, whatever is required. So the postures, this asanas, and then, and, and so you travel maybe to different places just to deepen your experiences, your knowledge and so forth. But nothing else, this is this world only about yoga and the practice and, right. and so forth so and we have these two different worlds if you would have to choose which world would you choose but they are both equally enticing because <laughs> <laughs> if you would have to make a choice make a choice uh, okay so, simply about the choice hmm? i think i'll still go for the for the right hand right arm yeah yeah the yoga world okay yes good so there's no other world, no? there's no million, billion dollar something. But this is you and yoga and all of that stuff. Yeah, let's say. Good. So this is a way where you find the priority. It's not always like this because, I mean, you can do maybe, in the way you explain you can't, but maybe you can find some, some balance in that. So for example, if you say, yeah, this is good, but where should I, what, a, what should I eat, where should I stay, what clothes should I wear, you know, so how to survive and how to live nevertheless a nice lifestyle or something, in case it's required. I mean, we have a lot of yogis, they're running around in some underwear or however you call it, and they're happy. They don't have any anything which bothers them, they stay in these ashrams and so forth. It's a lifestyle and nobody can really judge about this if they are happy with that, so why not? But this is the question, if if you would be happy with that, because we talk about values as well, which I can see, and there's also success mm -hmm. somewhere in this in this world. True. Maybe, you know, and success can be here found as well, but the expression of success, the outcome, which is very, very easy to identify with money, is not here. Maybe you will have some people who would love or die to learn from you or something, but maybe not. Okay. Maybe you stay alone in your forest and doing your yoga stuff, right? And you're right. super happy. Right. So that's the question. Um, talking about values, you have to really understand what what is which is really driving you, which is you know really compelling, and which is really important to you. Can be family, can be about learning, 
it's like some educational part which is always ongoing. Some people have this value or money or success. So a couple of things. And once we identify this, I think there is no dilemma anymore. We just have to juggle, juggle a little bit with that. So mm-hmm. for example, if you say, okay, I don't want to put my whole time completely into this, but maybe two hours a day, three hours a day, even when this is not pushed that fast, mm-hmm. talking about productivity, mm-hmm. How much time do you really need to be productive? Mm-hmm. As a leader, you have to delegate. You have to do only That's things right. which you only can do. You're not typing a letter or something like that. Mm-hmm. How much time is required working on a business, not in a business? So as, as we have from Tim Ferriss, a very nice book, The 4-Hour Week. So it's not even one hour every day. Mm-hmm. And the rest is like, what to do with my time, what to do with my time. <laughs> <laughs> and then usually we start doing something else with our time, so maybe a second business. So and then it comes overwhelming. If you have something like a hobby, let's call it like a hobby, like mm-hmm. this yoga world, this could be a great, great things to balance. It's just an idea, yeah. but we find out in, in that way. It's mm-hmm. a little technique in coaching. So, okay, only this world or only that world mm-hmm. to identify what is actually what kicks us you know so what gives us the kick what is really important actually on that Mm -hmm. and then we have to make a choice i mean even just in theory it's like i don't want to have this i don't want to get rid of this i don't want to get rid of this like you know they don't want to have this that they have to choose but if you get a little forced so you find a way you have this gut feeling so okay this two words i would choose this one or this one Mm -hmm. And the key that it gives each one of them. That was yeah, the point it's the understanding like. as well, yeah. Right. <laughs> so Jasmine, you mentioned that <clears throat> eventually it's okay if you juggle between both of the worlds to figure out which one is it that you belong into. And uh, this was this is an interesting moment for me because in a way, for example, how how long will that juggle has to be? <laughs> Can you can Maybe it's not a question. Because I find something of these two worlds, for example, the world of the company I'm running to is enabling me to give back to my family and close circle in terms of material goods. Mm-hmm. But the world of yoga is giving me knowledge, which is the secondary goal which I pursue. So both of the worlds are enabling me to give something. For this world, I give material, for this one, I give knowledge, of course, to those who are interested to receive. And I find myself e- equally appeal, appealed by the both of them. So, is it that I have to be jogging for just a little longer until I figure that out? Or what's going to be the next? Or how will that fall look like? Because you mentioned there may be a fall as well. <laughs> Maybe that was two questions in one. <laughs> <coughs> Doesn't matter, it's okay. I think you can juggle and you will identify your world. I think there is not a world, so but you create a world for you, which is fitting, which suits mm-hmm. you. And I think because of that, what you just mentioned, so you are very eager to, to learn more, which is, I mean, from the first perspective, really selfish. We want to learn more and more and more experiences and stuff like that. And this, this is a, a big value of yours. That's what I understand. And we have to look at your values first and then we can make a clear hierarchy Mm -hmm. on that. So for example, if learning is your number one, then maybe family and success and money and and stuff like that. So we can see there's usually the top five. So what I ask you is uh, in coaching, for example, so what are the 10 most important values to you? Mm -hmm. The positive ones, we have positive and negative ones. And um, then we will shortlist five of them. So it's a little procedure, but it's actually quite fast to, to identify. And then you make a hierarchy. And this can change, you know, so every maybe a year and in five years and two years whatsoever. But according to this, you know exactly the direction which happens or has to happen in this point of time mm-hmm. in your life. For example, educational part. And sometimes we have this idea about being super successful, making millions of dollars at least for the, for the company as a revenue. And um, it also requires sometimes some knowledge, for example. So this also comes to a clear order actually what we have to do. Mm-hmm. Even when we be super productive, but this is a lack of knowledge or being, you know, of lack of smartness or, or a creative ideas or something, it doesn't lead to anything. I understand. So, 
Yes. So, which was the second question? The second question is something which again came in the moment. The corner of my eye caught this title. This is your upcoming book, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Change me. Change me. The cover will change. <laughs> it's a dark <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Change me. Yeah. That that brought me to like intriguing question. When we say about changing, uh, changing someone or uh, changing myself. Hmm. What is it that we want to change? How should and, I know? <laughs> you? I mean, is there is there some uh, fixed part which we wish to mold through that change? How is it to identify that part which, to, which is to be changed? I've never gotten that need of people to change, to be honest. The Maybe the part of is the question is uh, uh, <laughs> how how to make the question. Why do we want to change? When you get your why, then you yes. get to know what is it that we want to change. Right? Yes, absolutely. And I think as long as we are happy, or at least we are okay with things, we don't want to change. But if we are suffering, we want to change. Mm -hmm. This is 80% of the population learns because they don't want to have, they fear actually that they will suffer or they, they will not feel good at all anymore. So it's a... Um, yeah, it's like pain. So mm -hmm. you, you know when you go further in this way, you will have only pain. So it's it's compelling then to change mm -hmm. something like uh, habits like smoking or something. People smoke and smoke and smoke and everybody says, hey, this is not healthy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so what? I don't feel anything so I can breathe. Everything is fine. So until the doctor maybe comes with a x-ray and says like, your lungs are quite gone. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, good morning. So and then maybe it's time to think and change. So 20% of the population is more about changing to become better. So they are they are award driven. Mm -hmm. And but this is rarely happens. So one fifth of the, the people are thinking in that way. Right. So usually when you say about that you are really interested in, in learning and stuff like this, I think you're one of this 20% uh, people. It's, it's nothing is good or bad on that. It's just a way to understand how somebody's function. Mm -hmm. So when you want to um, get some somebody to do something, so you know when you see and understand the pattern, talking about uh, employees or something like that. So you have to understand people mm -hmm. in order to lead them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in an influential, in a very positive, influential way. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's influencing everybody. Mm -hmm. Even when you sit next to me, wear caps, it's influencing me. Eventually, right. so you know, influencing people is always such a bad term, or understood as a bad term, but it's not. But this is a different topic. Understand? <laughs> yeah. So this is about change me, and um, this guy, this character Ahmed, he mm -hmm. changes actually not, uh, or he start not changing himself, so reaching out to somebody, but he wanted to have something fancy like a personal trainer. So the whole story started with that. That that I mean is the same Amit you were referring one of your speeches in the hotel convention. Oh you know <laughs> I've done my homework. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Same Amit. I mean different person but like the same character which you're like putting in the background. Is it's, that is that same on your picture in the book? Amit is an accumulation, he's 35 years old, he's an accumulation of all my clients, of my experience uh -huh. with my clients over 10 years. Uh -huh. So with the same problems, because we are human beings and everybody is really individual, but we have usually the tendency to suffer about the same problems right. or be happy about the same things and so uh -huh. forth. So yeah, this is Amit's story. Got it, <laughs> got it. Another question of mine, Jasmine. Uh, so as you can see nowadays, there is this global trend of people starting businesses, businesses in younger and younger age, like in their twenties itself. So, what would be your advice? Like, what would a person starting a business like me in the twenties should be paying more attention to? Where, where can a person like me is prone to do the mistake the most? Because people in their thirties and forties can do mistakes in different fields, and people like in my age can do mis is prone to do mistakes in a certain other field. So where is that place where I should be careful of in my age of doing business, for example? The problem is when we go right from I don't know universities or anything which you know comes from the educational part, when we jump into entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. I think we don't have experiences. 
So I think we can do all the mistakes like every other entrepreneur does mm -hmm. and did uh, on this earth. And actually, what I usually suggest is before you do something on your own, so learn at least three to five years, you know, maybe in a big company or something, that you don't do the same mistakes again or okay. have a mentor. But mentor also, I mean, it's on a stretch, it's like a chewing gum, mm -hmm. so time-wise, because we have to make experiences, that's for sure, but not always on ourselves, mm -hmm. not our own. So that means we can also learn from others. It's like my first training, so I wanted to study psychology, I read all the books, but I was not, you know, able to because I was only 13 or 14, so I read all that stuff, and then I decided, okay, I started training. and. It was very, you know, old school thing uh, somewhere in, in Germany, in, in Franconia. And, you know, so all these old experienced uh, people, elder, elder people, so and very, you know, old in experiences, they teach me a lot, really a lot. So on the beginning, I thought, so, <laughs> all that kind of things is like, okay. But I was really keen and after three months I knew everything about the company, where's what, how is it function and so forth. I mean, maybe I'm a quick learner, so but I think it's good to, to just follow first of all, to be a good follower, to learn what is really important because otherwise you waste a lot of money and a lot of time. So however, I learned a lot, so I did another training and another training, so I went to a couple of different trainings and then I started my own um, my own company. So nevertheless, I burned a lot of money because I made a couple of mistakes, but I don't know how much I would have burned more not having this experience as before. So I, I learned for at least eight, nine years about a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. So nothing makes sense, right? In the beginning when you do this and do this and this, just because you're interested in, but after some years and years, so everything makes a perfect sense. Everything is like a tool here, a tool there. So it falls into place, you know, yeah. yeah. This the moment when you mentioned that uh, you were learning from like a grumpy old people or something <laughs> like that, it, it makes me have a very interesting point, by the way. <laughs> like, I was asking myself what brought me to the path of entrepreneurship. Hmm. And now I think I finally got the answer. It's the existence of bad bosses, because if your <laughs> bosses are good, you'll be happy. You won't be, uh, everything will be okay, you won't be having any reason to leave the company and start pursuing the change you wish to see. But because in my case, I had my fair share of bad bosses, which is why that was the nut that pushed me on the other side. Okay, enough of bad bosses, I want to prove to the world what a good <laughs> boss needs to be like in, in essence. So True. let's say thanks to the bad bosses all across the world, I guess. <laughs> I hope this is not the only driven point why you went into entrepreneurship. But yes, I agree. Uh -huh. The world is full of bad leaders. I can't really say it differently. You know, with individual. Yeah, but so, or just to say to individuals. Mm -hmm. Because when I talk to you, it's different than talking to him or to her or whoever. Mm -hmm. Everything, I mean, you, you have your style, of course, no, nobody denies that, but other people are or need to be handled differently, let's mm -hmm. put it in that way. And this needs real leadership. Right. So, Jasmine, I think I would like to wrap up with one final question, mm -hmm. which serves just a perfect context now that we mentioned the bad boss thing. <laughs> so, tell me how not to be a bad boss in our day to day. Uh, like how to be a good boss yeah how i like this leader. question i like this question how to be a good boss or a leader okay i think we have to uh, consider two things so one is about outcome orientated and the second thing is about a people person so you have to be both or you have to take care of both and actually you can't fake uh, being a people person so either you are really interested in the person or not mm -hmm. but a good leader is interested in the people and it's not just you know faking it so it's interest yeah interested in you know what is actually this person all about what does the person say what are the, the problems the difficulties the the joy and so forth what makes people happy what are the strengths and weaknesses in order to lead you have to understand first so what is actually this person all about? If I hire somebody uh, for X, Y, Z and I find out after some time so this person is completely unable to do X, Y, Z but this person is amazing in uh, ABC 
So I talk to this person, so I, I, I guide this person, so she or him is like, you know what, I observe, la 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 la, and so you get an answer, for example. So it's about observing, it's about listening, mm -hmm. asking the right questions, of course, mm -hmm. uh, listening, and uh, just the communication overall. So understanding what is the person all about and so forth. So the outcome oriented is also about taking care of structures, schedules, and so forth. So both together, I think it's a great leadership. Mm -hmm. So at least in theory. Mm -hmm. So focus on outcomes plus focus on people themselves. Yes. Is what will create a great leader at the end of the day. Yeah, and you go okay. first, right? So if you you take care of your people, so you have to take care of your people, and I think the greatest leader always takes care of their people. So and when when somebody is with you in your team and feel secure about the job, about, I mean, whatever. So they will do everything which, you know, which really supports you and, you know, you as a person and you as also the leader of the company and vice versa. It's it's a win-win situation, mm -hmm. you can say. It's mm -hmm. in, the, in the business world, win-win situation, but completely also in the personal, in the private world. If somebody feels really secure and protected and in good hands, so, does everything usually for you and only vice versa vice versa I hear right. it's not a one way street and that's why you can't fake it so either you are interested in somebody or not if you are, if you don't dislike this person so if there is no chemistry no common chemistry or something so usually it will never work I understand. it's in a nutshell right <laughs> it's in a nutshell right. Does it make sense? It makes perfect sense, Jasmine. Thanks for confidence. Absolutely. I think I have just ran out of question, have lots to contemplate on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about leadership. So we, have, we have to frame things as well. Yeah, great talking to you. Thanks I a lot. Thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all the best for you and your company and also your world of yoga so that you take care of both things. Uh, so Jolly has to be there still in order. After this conversation, yeah, we should just go <laughs> juggle for a little bit more. Until you find it should your be okay. way. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Good. All the best. Thank you.